Yeah. I invite you to stand if you are able. We'll sing the insert I am thine, O Lord, all four verses. My name is John Kerner, and on behalf of First Presbyterian Church, I want to welcome you to our ecumenical community Lenten services. This is our 51st year of having these services, so we're delighted to have all of you who are here this morning in the sanctuary in beautiful downtown Clarksburg, West Virginia, the corner of 2nd and Main Street, and we're also glad to have all of those who are joining us on the live stream uh, on Facebook and Zoom. Our musicians today are Jeannie Harris and Dick Ogden, and our preacher today is the Reverend Linda Muley from St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Linda, we're delighted to have you with us. Thank you. Our offering today, uh, the offering boxes are by the door. If you would put your offering in as you leave, it goes to uh, support the work of the Clarksburg Mission. And we will now have a duet by Jeannie and Dick. Thank you. 
invite you to stand, if you are able, for the call to worship and open in prayer. Please respond from your relatives. Lift up your voice and call out to God. We cry out, believing that God hears us. Come together and wait for God. We come together, trusting that God is still speaking. Surely God's presence is here with us now. We wait in hope, for God's steadfast love lifts our hearts. Come, worship the Lord. Come, celebrate the power of God that restores us. Let us pray together. Catch us, O God, in our aimless scurrying from you and others. And hold us in this Lenten season. Hold our hearts to the beat of your grace. And create in us a resting place. A kneeling place. A tiptoe place. Where we can listen for your whispered silence. And be attentive to your healing love. In the name of the Holy One of Nazareth. Amen. You may be seated. We made a small mistake in the boat, and there was only one special music, so uh, we're not skipping Dick and Jean here. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, years ago, my brother and sister-in-law owned and worked in a import car repair place. And although my sister Donna worked on cars, she also handled all of the billing and people coming in and dealt with the public. Well, there was a man in their town named Brother Richard, and he was a very devout and well-known preacher in that area. And invariably, he would bring his car into them to work on it. But when he came to pay the bill, he would come up to my sister-in-law. He'd say, Sister Donna, he said, I have to tell you, I had a word from the Lord this morning that you were only going to charge me half of what you thought you were going to charge me. And she would kind of shrug and she'd say, well, you know, Brother Richard, if this a word from the Lord, then I mean, I'll try to adjust the bill and do what I can do. Well, this went on. He was a regular customer until finally one day she saw him coming and he came up to her and, and before he could say anything, she said, Brother Richard, she said, I have to tell you, she said, I had a vision from the Lord today. And in that vision that the Lord gave me, the Lord told me, you're going to pay your bill in full today. See, pastors can kind of throw other pastors under the bus sometimes, but pastors, in this case, Brother Richard, was very big on practicing his piety before other people, of holding out his title as a reverend, as a person of faith, as a Christian man, and hoping that it got him certain things. 
it's sort of an odd thing, isn't it, that the text that I just read is the text that a lot of us used last week for Ash Wednesday, the day on which we, many of us, will actually put that physical reminder of our mortality in the shape of the ashen cross on our foreheads. We do that, and then we hear these texts about not having expressions of public piety, according to Jesus. It's sort of an odd contradiction that rather than having pride in our offerings, we should not let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Or that rather than pray in public, we should go into a room and shut the door. Or rather than having it be obvious to people that we are fasting, that we should put oil on our heads and wash our faces. The thing is, we read these texts or this text as a public church, as a community of faith. So it's not just talking about who we are as individuals, but who we are and to whom we belong as the community of the faithful. Now one of the things I would like to challenge us with this afternoon is that we are privileged. And we hear these words from Matthew's Gospel as people of great privilege. Now the funny thing is, most people don't want to think of themselves as having any privilege. We like to think that we have worked hard in life, that we've maybe gone on to college, or if not, we've worked hard at a job, that we've made sound decisions, and that we've um, you know, done things legally and lawfully, and not that we've gotten where we are today because of any privilege in our lives. All of us want to be safe and secure, but none of us want to think that we are privileged. In our Monday morning Bible study at St. Mark's, we were looking at this text and um, reading a little bit of a commentary by Michael Joseph Brown, who has written the book True to Our Native Land, an African-American New Testament. And he notes the subtle assumptions about privilege in the reading from Matthew I just shared. And I have to be honest, I had never thought about it this particular way. Jesus' command to the disciples, or really, Matthew's command to the hearers of the gospel much later to pray in their room assumes that they have a room to retreat to. Even though Jesus himself had nowhere to lay his head. Almsgiving assumes that you have something to give that all of your resources aren't just tied up in providing for daily needs. And even fasting, in this text from Matthew, assumes that you have the means to make choices about when and how to start and stop your own hunger. The text in Matthew assumes that the audience that are hearing the words have shelter, have resources, and have food, because they are in control of these basic things. Jesus' message is a challenge to us who are privileged, to us who gather here in the warmth of this place, who have enough to eat, who have places to go. And Jesus' message is a talent is a challenge to us as a community of faith to think carefully about who we are as a community. And the challenge to all of us in our individual places of worship isn't that we're doing the wrong things by any means. I mean, giving alms to our neighbor, helping support ministries in our community is wonderful. And praying in public space is one of the reasons we gather together. But we have to remember who we are and why we are doing them. 
And they have to be about not just worship of God, but of serving and loving our neighbor. Almsgiving, praying, fasting, they're practices to deepen us spiritually and to help remind us of one another, of who else is in the midst with us. It's a way to train our hearts and our minds to see one another, to be open to one another. I'll never forget several years ago, before I even lived and worked here in Clarksburg, and my daughter and I were traveling through town on a very, very hot day. And we came up on a stop sign, and there was a man burdened down with clothing who I later came to know as Cowboy. But it was so hot, and he was so burdened. And my little five-year-old at the time said, Mom, look at the man. And I said, well, I think we've got some water here. So we rolled down the window, and I handed him some water, and I might have even had some bread or something. And I'll never forget, Cowboy looked me in the eye, and he said, lady, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, oh, but of course. I said, take the water. And I said, you know, this, I don't know if I have anything else to give you. And I kind of stumbled over myself. And again, he looked me in the eye and he said, bless you. It was in that moment. And I think the reason he asked the question, lady, are you sure you want to do this? was because he knew that in that exchange, we were seeing each other, that I was seeing him. Indeed, that is what these texts challenge us to be about, to be mindful of the privilege we have as a church in this time and place, to use all of our gifts and resources for those who are most vulnerable, to truly see other people. Because much later in Matthew, Jesus is going to tell the folks following him that when they did it to the least of, them, of these in their midst, they did it to Jesus. And they'll say, Jesus, when did we see you? And it was, in fact, in the lives, in the faces, and the struggles and the hopes of the others in the community. invite you to stand if you're able. Our hymn is softly and tenderly. Thank you. 
Again, I want to thank you all for being with us and worshiping us today and invite you to come back next week. Next week, our preacher is the Reverend Nora Becker from Christ Episcopal Church and Barnabas Chapel. Invite you to join with me in the closing prayer and benediction from your bulletin. From where we are to where you need us, Christ beside us. From where we are to what you can make of us, Christ before us. From the mouthing of generalities to making signs of your kingdom, Christ beneath us. Through the streets of this world to the gates of heaven, Christ above us. Surround us with your presence. Inspire us with your purpose. Confirm us in your love. Amen. Amen.